In this video, I'll explain what a scope thread is. When you spawn a thread, and inside that thread you reference a data that is declared outside of the thread, you will usually need to move the ownership of that data into the thread. So, for example, let's say that we have a string called message. Inside the thread, we try to print this message out. If we try to compile the contract, the code will not compile. It says that we need to add the move keyword to the closure. We need to force the ownership of this message string to transfer from the main thread into this thread that we spawned. So that if you wanted to execute this thread and maybe print this message out after this thread is done executing, for example here, after the thread is done executing, if you wanted to print this message out again, then this code will not compile since we transfer the ownership of this message string into this closure. But there is a way that we can do this using scope threads. Scope threads will allow us to spawn a thread and also borrow the data that is declared outside of the thread. So let's change the code a little bit so that we use scope threads. The first step is to create a scope. We do this by calling thread colon colon scope. You'll need to pass in a single input, a closure. The closure will be given a single input, a scope that is created by calling this function. Inside this scope, we can spawn new threads by calling scope spawn. And now we can remove this keyword move. The scope thread doesn't return a handle, so we'll remove this. And that is it. We first create a new scope by calling thread colon colon scope. And inside this new scope, we can spawn a new thread by calling scope.spawn. Inside the spawn function, we print this message that is referenced inside the main function. And then after this thread is done executing, we try to print this message again. Let's execute the code. Execute the code and we see the message hello printed twice. So this is an example of using scope thread so that inside the thread that is spawned, we borrow the data instead of transferring the ownership. Now you may have also noticed that we then have to call the join function like what we would have done if we were to spawn a thread. When we spawn a thread, it returns a join handle. And to wait for the thread to finish execution, we need to call a join. However, when we create a scope thread, the join is done automatically so that we don't have to call the function join. Now inside the scope, if you wanted to create multiple threads, here is an example of how you would do it. Let's say message one and message two. Execute the code again. And this time we see message two is hello, message one is hello, and the message that comes from the main function is hello again. So this is an example of spawning multiple threads inside the same scope. And finally, how do we return a data from a scoped thread? So here is how you will return a data from a scoped thread. When we spawn a thread over here, it returns a join handle. So this will be, let's say that h1 for handle one, and this one will be that h2 for handle two. Whatever that we return from this closure is what's going to be returned to the main function. So let's return, let's say h1.join.unwrap. Join will return a result and unwrap will return the value that is returned from an OK. Same with h2, h2.join.unwrap. Since inside the thread that we spawned, we're not returning any value, let's return something. From the first handle, let's say we'll return a number 1u32. And from the second handle, we'll return 2u32, number two of the type u32. Okay, so now what's going on here is h1 is a join handle. When it's done executing, it's gonna return 1u32, which will be over here. And h2 is a join handle. When it's done executing, this will return the number two of the type u32. And finally, let's capture what is being returned here inside the main function. The data that is returned from the first handle, let's say b1, and the value that is being returned from the second handle, b2. And then let's also print these out. Print ln b1 and b2. Execute the code again and we see that b1 is 1 and b2 is 2. So this is an example of using scope thread. It allows us to borrow data when we spawn threads instead of moving the ownership of the data into the thread that we spawn. 